He said, oh, get you out of this place. So Lot realized the urgency of the thing that the angel had said. That's why he said, oh, he said, come, come on, man. Let's get out of this place. So he's thinking now, hey, come with me. Um, we'll get out of this place because the Lord is going to destroy this place. But the Bible said, he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. All right? So they say, like, father-in-law, what, what do you mean? What got into your head? I mean, were you having too much drinks or something? I mean, you know, what got into your head? You know? This week I sent a message to some relative and I don't explain certain things and they ask me, like, I get questions like, is this wrong or what? Wrong, wrong or whatever? I don't answer. Okay? I don't answer. So it's the same thing today when we are telling people by the, by the power of God and by His word, say, up, oh, get you out of this place because God is going to destroy this world. Okay? And the time is so near. Okay? And when you see it, you're telling them because of what the angel told you in your house. Right? But they're looking at you like, Ma, I said, hey, you mean I'm supposed to leave my... No, no, no. And you know how much investment I have in Sodom here and I, even then, you know, tomorrow I'm supposed to do so and so and I have so and so on my schedule and for the rest of the week. Wait, Father-in-law, I mean, will you, will you come with this kind of thing? I mean, don't say what, no, man, you can't have a serious, eh? Out of the clear blue like that, come and tell us about to get up out of this place. Yes, get up out of the place. Okay? Get up! Get up! Because you will never get a chance to get up again. Alright? So the scripture said, And when the morning arose, the angels hastened Lot, saying, Notice, you know, by morning, by morning, the same night, all those men are left there, I don't know what they do. Blind, same way. Alright? And, um, I don't know if the angel released them and let them go home. I don't think they did that. Because they knew what they were going to do anyway afterwards. So, let them stay there blind. Okay? They won't even see what's going to happen to them. It's like a lot of people today are so blind. They can't even see what's going on in the world today. Right? It's going to happen. And they, and they, won't, they won't even know. Right? And let's realize that you can't get anywhere with these children. You're not going to get anywhere. If your daughter didn't want to leave, I don't know if they would leave because their, their husband would tell them, no, you can't leave. Okay? I guess they could if they wanted to. The angel realized there's nobody I'm going to have but Lot, his wife, and these two daughters which he wanted to give away to the, devil, to the devil's children. Right? So the Bible said they hastened Lot. They said, Lot, hey, we're on time, you know. We're on time. Hey, hey, listen, lad. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. We have a deadline from heaven. Hallelujah. We have a deadline from heaven. Okay? And, and, and it's, it, it, it's coming up on us right now. There's a deadline coming up. Amen. Hallelujah. We have a deadline from heaven. And it's coming up, it's coming up, it's coming up, lad. You can't move so slow. Right? And the Bible said, redeeming the time for the days are evil. The Pastor Paul said that. Saying, you have to move faster than that. Okay? And the scripture said, He said, arise, take thy wife and thy two daughters which are here, lest they be consumed in the iniquity of the city. That means, you know, the, 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 the the, the, it's, it's timed, right? And the angels know exactly from heaven the, the, the moment when this is going to strike the earth. We're going to strike Saturn. They know. And the angels said to them, listen, hey, if you tell, if you, the, sp the speed at which you're going, you're not going to escape. That's what the angels saying. Right? You, and and this, is, this is what I was saying before. I said, 
The speed at which some people are operating when they say they want to be saved, they will not be saved. Because time is going to run out on them. And the angel is saying, listen, look, you better move faster than that. Okay? Otherwise, destruction is going to take you, even though you are trying to get out. And let that one resonate. You hear what I just said, what the Holy Ghost said? It said, destruction is going to take you, even though you are trying to get out. All because you are not moving with expediency. You are not moving with a sense of urgency. You are moving like you had a lot of time on your hands. And you are moving carelessly, carelessly. So nonchalant, maybe. I want to see it, yes, but I mean, let it wait some more time. Right? And he just said, listen, don't you even try that because it's not going to work. So the scripture said, and while he lingered, so it, it made me all my thoughts in his mind like, you know, I mean, right? Thinking the wrong things. Right? Because when it comes to your life now, it, you can take a, you can worry about Alman or something, but what happens when you're dead? It, it doesn't exist. Right? It doesn't mean anything to you if you're dead. Right? Better you have clothes on your back, or even no clothes for that matter, in your life, running somewhere for safety, then you are dead and you have food and drinks and clothes and gold and silver all around you. What is the point? Right? Because you cease. You expired. You're gone. Right? And the angel is saying that this is your life we're talking about in a lot. So the angel said to him, now listen, hey, why you linger? The man laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters. The Lord being gracious, merciful unto them. And they brought them forth and set them without the city. My God, what more can you ask than, for, than that? The angel is saying to them, listen, hey, at this rate at which you're going, you're not going to escape the judgment. And I didn't, and the angel came specifically to take them out so that they were saved. And, and, and this is what I'm trying to say to you. When the God came, he couldn't even get them to go in his house unless he as well like beg and beseech them. Right? Too many contrary things were going on where they were. And Lot had adapted some of these things to some degree. And it had beclouded his mind that he could not see the danger that was before him. And the angel is saying, listen, I'm sure you saw already enough. You know that we are no men who come down here. And we are telling you clearly that this is a blindness this is we throw on them is nothing compared to what we really come here for because we didn't come here just to make them blind. We are on a mission to destroy this place. We have been doing all these studies about the plagues upon the earth and the, the trumpets and all these things. And in all of these things, angels were involved. Right? And the scripture is showing you that they come here on a mission. And that's it. That's the thing that we're talking about being like an angel. And you have to understand when it comes to an angel is that an angel does exactly what God tells them to do. Right? They don't have an agenda apart from God's agenda. They don't make their own agenda. If God told them that do things in this order, this is how they do it. He said, well, do this, they do it. He said, stop, they stop. He said, go again, they go again. And he said, stop, they stop. Okay? He said, do this for three days, they do it for three days. Right? They're not going to do it for one day and then say, okay, that's enough. Right? So we're talking about being like angels. We have to have a mind like that. Okay? The angel said, at the rate at which you're going lot, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, man, you're in trouble. Right? And I said, the angel said, yes, man, let's grab them. They said, the two of them agree. I said, let's grab them. Maybe lot in one hand here, the daughter over here or... The other one has the wife in one hand, the, the um, daughter over the other side. 
and say let's take them outside the city at least we get them to a place of a point of, of safety right a point of safety okay well and they can finish the walk to get out right let them see exactly in fact they really weren't safe but at least they were on a road to safety right but at least they were outside the border if they saw what the angels did then they should understand the urgency of it and that they should move as fast as they can and the angel said just in case you don't understand what's going on here i have, to, I have instruction for you and the bible said a lot um, and they said um and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that made they come out now there is no town there is no city there is no nothing there's a wide open expanse now right say so, okay take it from here take it all away now your turn get out so we can do what we have to do right the scripture said and this is the instruction he said, he said escape for thy life look not behind thee neither stay there in all the plain escape to the mountain lest thou be consumed right and I, 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 you understand what that is? I remember the first time I had a fire drill working in a, you know, a tall building, right? And when, they, when the fire drill was done, this is way back in the 70s, the fire department was there doing the fire drill with us. So when we came out of the building, there were nice seats outside there made of stone and all these things. And um, we could, um, we just sat down there comfortably. So when the drill was over, I don't know if the marshal or captain or whatever they call him, he wanted to address us as workers, right? And there are hundreds of us up there. And he said, okay, the first, one first thing I want to tell you is that what you did here was very dangerous. If you're trying to escape from a building that's on fire, and you sit so close to the building right under here, he said, debris from the building, glass and all many things are going to fall down and you are kill you right here. Although, you are outside the building. I'll never forget that thing. I never even thought about that. He said, when you get out of the building, you must be at distance. And then he told us what distance we should be from the building to make ourselves safe. So it's one thing for us to run out of the building. In fact, it was after that they made rules about like don't go in an elevator. Because one time people just maybe would go in the elevator, then they had to make rules about it. They said that if there's a fire, don't go in the elevator. Because that can be a trap. Because the elevator works out with electricity. Right? If the electricity should be burned up or something going around with it, you're trapped inside a box. Nobody even knows where you are. So you're trying to escape and get trapped be, get in, in the path of your escape. So they said better to be in the stairwell and they make them in a special way with doors that it can withstand a certain amount of heat in case that can help. Okay? So we got out and we were still in danger because we were still too close to the building. And the angel is telling them like, listen, hey, don't stay close to the city. Because when the destruction comes, it's gonna, right, explode. And, you, and it will hit you over there in the plane. He said, don't tarry in the plane. He said, get out of this area altogether. Go, in fact, the safe place for you to go to the mountain, right? I lift up my eyes unto the hills, and winds come as my help. He said, go to the mountain, right? Stay up there, okay? Stay up there. But look at Lot now. He said, Behold now, and Lot said unto him, Oh, not so, my Lord, behold now, thy servant has found grace in thy sight, and thou hast magnified thy mercy, which thou hast shown unto me in saving my life, and I cannot escape to the mountain, lest some evil take me, and I die. Behold now, this city is near to thee, near to flee unto, and it is a little one. Oh, let me escape thither. Is it not a little one? And my soul shall live. And he said unto him, See, I have accepted thee concerning this thing also, that I will not overthrow this city for the which thou hast spoken. 
Haste thee, escape thither, for I cannot do anything till thou become thither. Therefore the name of the city was called Zor. So that one city, that city was saved because a one righteous man wanted to go in there. But that city should have been destroyed. But you see that Lot was living, supposed to be a righteous man, but he doesn't even have enough faith in God. Right? To, to, uh, he could take care of him while he's on the mountain. He wanted to be in a city among people and the same kind of environment he's used to. And, and of course he will see streets, he will have lighting. Go to the mountain. That's where God said he must go. He will take care of you up there. Right? The Bible tells you how Jesus went on the mountain, uh, um, in the wilderness, he went on the mountain, he stayed there all along, and, and I mean, don't tell me that because he's God, as Elijah went out in the, in, in the wilderness, all these things, John the Baptist. Go out in the mountain, that's where he told him to go. Don't tell him you want to go into a city because, of course, you used all certain kind of luxuries and certain kind of fancy kind of life and living certain kind of way, right? Okay, so you don't want to go into the mountain, right? You don't want to go into the mountain, right? Okay. You see, I'm saying the man is not living by faith, right? And his, his faith is so shattered, whatever faith he had, just because of the environment that he's living in. And you see, the same thing is happening with church people today, right? The same thing is happening, and the scripture said, but look at the irony of this whole thing now. Look at the irony of it all. The scripture said, when he got there now, and he was saved, the angel said to him, listen, I cannot do anything. It's like, the angel said, like, hey, you know, I did so much already. And he said, yes, I thank you for doing all of that. He said, yeah, but what more you want? Oh, I want to go see He said, all right, go, 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 because the deadline is on me and I can't do, I cannot do anything until I get you to a safe place. Why? Because God made a covenant with his uncle, Abraham. He said, I will save you. I will save you. Right? That's the reason why. You see how faithful God is? He said, I cannot do anything until right, I get you to a safe place. And he goes to the safe place. And when he got there now, the Bible said, Then the Lord rained upon Sodom and Gomorrah, fire, brimstone and fire from the Lord out of heaven. And he overthrew those cities and all the plains and all the inhabitants of the cities that, and that which grew upon the ground, in the grass, everything is done. We have the Dead Sea today. But his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. She was told not to do that. Right? She was told not to do that. Okay? She was told not to do that. What I said to you, I couldn't find my keys. I'm looking. There were other places I could look. Right? At my pocket. I'm going look. Where do I know I'm going to put the keys? And the dresser. I go there, it's not there. Where the next place it might be, it's not there. Where else am I supposed to look? The voice of the Lord said to me, look in the door. Open the door and look in the lock. That's where your keys are. What do I do? Oh, no. My keys couldn't have been in the, in the lock. No, no, no. Um, let me go search in the bathroom. Let me go look uh, on the dining table. Let me go look. No! The voice of the Lord is saying to you, look in the door outside. That's where you are. Okay? That's exactly what you do. He told them deliberately, don't look behind you. Okay? Now because of curiosity, or any reason, okay, you are on the route to escape. Stay on that route and hold your head forward. And and Lot's wife looked back, and she just changed into Pilasa, changed off into a statue at work. Okay, she's done. Okay. Abraham, a lot saw that happen to the woman. Okay? No. I can't say a lot saw it. Because if he saw it, then he also would have become a, a pillar of salt. 
Because out of him to see, he would have to turn back too. Because the Bible said, she looked up from behind him. So somehow, she was to keep in pace. And when he get to his point of safety, he's going to realize that, where's my wife? She didn't make it. Right? She didn't make it. Right? And the Bible said, when God brought us the judgment upon Sodom and Gomorrah, Abraham got up early in the morning to the place where he stood before the Lord. Right? That's chapter 20, that's verse 27. So Abraham had a place where he worshipped God. Right? He had an altar. And when he got up to the altar, he's like, stunned. He said, what? And he see smoke going up to heaven. And he sees exactly what God has said. And I'm sure in his heart, he might, was rewinding and said, but I wonder where life is now. But something he said to him, well, I believe God has a place you, you protect him. And we'll, I'll find him again. He, he, um, I, I, you know, he should be safe somewhere. Don't know where, but I believe he obeyed the voice of God and is safe. And I have to say that as the Holy Ghost saying, obey the voice of God. Because as much as Abraham had pleaded for a lot to be saved, if he was not willing to get out, he would have been destroyed here, despite Abraham's pleading. Do you understand that? You can beg and plead for your children as much as you want, for your wife, your husband, and whoever you want to beg and plead for. But if they are stubborn and stiff-necked, as Moses said, I will not obey the voice of God, they're going to die right there in their sin. Right there. Okay? Just as Lot's wife, she became a pillar of salt. She didn't make it. Even though she got out of the city, well, in the path to safety, but she died going on all because she did the wrong thing. The angel told her, and you know, why do I talk about this even when the keys that I talk as my testimony? It's because when you are with God, angels speak to you. It's just like I told you when I was at the shop, right, the stop and shop the day. And the angels of God spoke to me and said to me, he said, hurry and grab your things out of the car and get out of the way because something is going to hit you. You ever heard me give you a testimony, right? That's what he told me. Right? So I pushed my car quickly to the back of the, uh, the car. I said, let me take all my things quickly out of it. And by the time I did that, the car over the other side, that's back, the vehicle, that's back straight out and hit me in the rear. That guy didn't fall to the ground. I heard the voice of God. For years I asked God, why is it that the car still hit me even though I moved where you told me to move? And years later he told me, he said, but that's not what I told you to do. I never told you to push the car up. I told you, grab the things out of the car. Leave the car here, make it hit the car, for that matter. As I told people, you know, maybe when you're in the supermarket, if you don't want somebody to hit you, make sure you have a car. They, because when they see that car, they don't want to damage their car by hitting that car, especially if it's made of metal. But they will hit you. If you have a car, let them hit the car. And the Lord said, I never told you that. The time you take me you know, to push the car up and try to take the things out, I told you, grab the things out of the car and get out of the way. So even that split second there, I tell you, I maybe a moment there, whatever. Right? And I could have been, been killed. Thinking that I did exactly what God told me. But that's how he told me. Right? But in my mind, I'm saying, let me move fast. And I did move fast, yeah. But not what he said me to do. Right? That's not how he told me to do it. Right? So I, I got received God's mercy there. Right? Confused afterward. Because the man just hit me and just drove off too. And then as he drove off, and then he came back and he said, Oh, did I, did I hit something? 
Yeah, and I said, yeah, you did hit me with a beaker. And then, after when he drove off again, I was gone. You know, I didn't call the police. I didn't try to get no insurance money off him or nothing. I wasn't hurt. I just thank God, okay? But, you know, somebody asked me, they said, are you okay? I said, yes, I'm okay. If I'd fallen to the ground, then I didn't fall to the ground. But I'm saying to you, the angel of God was telling me that because he knew what was about to happen, what the devil set up. And so it is, the angel of God is telling them, listen, don't look behind you. Don't look behind you. Okay? You know, it's like when God said, don't eat up that food. Right? If, imagine a lot, look behind him to eat a pill of salt. The daughter looked behind him, she turned a pill of salt. And then the daughter turned behind a pill of salt. So there were four people who got out of Sodom. And when the history is written, you will hear, oh yeah, there were four people who got out. So where are they? Oh, here they are. One, two, three, four. Pillar cell. Right? Would have been better they didn't get out. Okay? We come a reproach and a byword and a proverb for generations to come. Right? So the three of them get out and they're in Zor, in this is the city. And they, they're supposed to be safe in there now. And the scripture said, when Lot, when Abraham looked, he said, toward the land of the plain, behold, lo, the smoke of the country went up to the smoke of, as the smoke of a furnace. So he's a distance away now. And yet still you can see the fire and everything going up into the air. My God. And he's a distance away now. Right? And he looked towards Sodom. Right? And, yeah, and it came to pass when God destroyed the cities of the plain that God remembered Abraham and sent Lot out of the midst of the overthrow when he overthrew the cities in which Lot dwelt. So, so Lot had fallen down so bad, badly, that it wasn't his prayer that saved him. And there are people today who are just like that. They're supposed to be Christian. They're supposed to be living for God. But they are so estranged from heaven that their prayers can't save them. Prayers are maybe too little, too insignificant, meaningless, maybe deficient. Like, I mean, it's, or maybe they're not even praying for that matter. And that's one of the things I don't like. And sometimes people make you waste your prayers. You're praying for them, and when you get to find out, they don't even have God in their mind. They have no interest. Their prayers are wasted. They're like, yeah. So the scripture says now when, and, 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 and let, look at the irony in this whole thing now. And the scripture said, it came to pass, Verse, verse, I'm at verse um, 30. A lot went up out of Zor and dwelt in the mountain and his two daughters with him. For he feared to dwell in Zor and he dwelt in a cave. He had his two daughters. Isn't that what the angel did tell him in the beginning? Yeah? You know, some of us cannot believe God unless we see some dangerous things happen. Right? The angel told you to go in the mountain. And you come up with this lame excuse about that. You're going to die up there and you can't survive up there. Okay? The angel is knowing the destruction of what is about to happen. Is telling you that you can't stay around this place. Right? Get out of the plane. Don't look behind you. I mean, he said, escape for your life. Get to the mountain. I'm telling you, he said, that's where you need to be. Right? You're begging God. Oh God, give me a Zohar. Right? Give me a Zohar and I can stay there. I mean, you know, a woman, 